Hello friends, welcome back to Craft Aquatic, I'm Matt G. Today I'll be showing you all of the coral in the Craft Aquatic 120 gallon SPS mixed reef. It's a video many of you have requested and I'm very excited to go over each polyp colony and recently added frag in a bit of detail. Being a mixed reef, there is a mixture of coral types in this setup with an emphasis on mid to high end SPS. So if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Craft Aquatic and hit the notification bell. Here we go. This mixed reef is a standard Red Sea 4 foot by 24 by 24 inch all glass aquarium that has been set up for roughly two and a half years now. If you are interested in a full tank equipment tour, I did a video about that as well. Check out the link in the description below. Most of the coral are doing splendidly with a few exceptions which I will show you. There are a couple that are recovering from a recent parameter shift and lighting fixture change. Here we have our GSP or Green Star polyps. I glued two different varieties. You can see the two shades of green if you look closely. Onto the overflow, just little frags and they've since grown in. They are isolated on the overflow so they can't reach the rest of the reef and take over. Down lower in the corner we have this jack-o'-lantern Leptoceras and this blue gonopora. Both of them appreciate the lower flow of this area of the tank. The scenario in the back there tucked under the cave and right to the right of it is this red gonopora. This is one of my favorite corals in the tank. It's a very slow grower, but it just does very well. The red-orange Montipora setosa there is great for filling in spaces on rock between coral. And in behind it is the Ore Bird of Paradise, which uh, was a huge colony that was just fragged down to that size. And right above it is the Sunset Montipora encrusting. Here we have a stylo, it's a green stylophora, and this is the Limelight Hydnophora by Jason Fox. This is an awesome looking coral in person, it's hard to capture on camera. This is our Tyree Pink Lemonade, Acropora, and this is one of the corals in the tank that indicates when something is not right with water chemistry. The other one is the Strawberry Shortcake. Now both of these coral will exhibit an extreme color shift in their tissue when there's a change in alkalinity or phosphate levels. And that is what they've done here. These three coral, what a healthy pink lemonade looks like at the downstairs frag system. And this is what a strawberry shortcake acropora should look like. Fortunately, the colonies are recovering and they will look 100% in a few months. Moving on, we have this Aura Borealis. This is one of my oldest SPS corals. It is a beautiful blue-green color. And right behind it, one of my newest SPS corals is this Oregon tort. It's something I've always wanted in my tank and I'm happy to have it. Here we have a Walt Disney that has shifted in color a little bit uh, due to the light fixture change and right behind it there's this red dragon coral. It's a classic in reef keeping SPS coral. And I wanted to show you this side view with the blue lights on and a yellow filter. This is more what the Walt Disney looks like in person. Even though the colors shifted a little bit, the greens are a little more intense than our normal on this coral. Here we have this wild blue millipora colony grown from a frag. I call it the Snuffleupagus because it's so fuzzy. And on this rock where the Bally Green Slimer used to be, we have a JF Solar Flare Frag, the Vin, and a TCK Inferno that I'm looking forward to seeing grow out. Tucked up in the corner there, starting to grow out, there's a wild variation of a pearlberry and an actual or a pearlberry frag. And here we have a very nice Hawkins Echinata, again one of my older corals, and right above it, a Jason Fox Flame. That is not showing the yellow tips too well right now. Here we have two Capricornus colonies, and I put them down low because if you put them up high, they're going to shade the coral underneath and kill them. So that's why I've learned my lesson to put them here. And then over under, we have some Halithoa and some zoanthids, and I'm not very good at uh, uh, figuring out the names of these things, so let me know in the description below if you do know what they are. We have some Samacora, green Samacora, and this green toadstool, which has been growing out very nicely, and that's why this is a mixed reef, because I have leather corals mixed in there too. And this Samacora has grown up around these Palithoas here to encase them in tubes, it's so cool. And I just found this uh, bubblegum chalice coral. It's one of my grail corals, and I got it for a pretty good deal. This is a Bower Banky, another new addition, and another type of coral that I've been getting into recently. 
being an aquarium that houses a lot of SPS coral colonies, the flow is very high and does blast some of these LPS coral, but this hot pink onopora doesn't seem to mind at all. This is it under the blue lights with the yellow filter, and here we have it under the white lights. A very bubblegum color, and right next to it is one of my oldest coral. I've had this for about 15 years. It's a chalice coral, blue with pink eyes, and here's one that is green with orange eyes. It's a beautiful coral. It doesn't have a name. And here's that sweet Bauer Banky coral again. Coming up is a little audio clip from my son. He was curious about what I was doing when I was filming this video. Do you always want the people hear us talking? No, because I cut the sound out. Oh. All the sound comes from me doing overdubs in the studio. So it's, uh, it's, so it's like about the coral and everything? Mm-hmm. Maybe you should show like a little scene of me feeding the coral too. Sure, you can do that. I love to do that because he's very helpful with this tank and I very much appreciate my six-year-old son's effort keeping all these coral looking so nice. In this shot, in the background, there's a yellow rim turbinaria. It's huge and it's growing. There's the Duncanopsomia and the Valley Green Slimer there. An Indo Torch on this magnetic rock on the back of the tank. Bubblegum Digitata and a Rainbow Matapora. It's an encrusting Matapora. Here's a big old PC rainbow colony underneath another Hawkins Echinata colony because I really like them. And underneath that are these candy cane corals, green and there's red with a green center. Here we have our giant WWC OG Bounce mushrooms, tea saucer sized. Right next to them are those red acan lords. And down and tucked in the corner there you can see a war coral if you look right under the rim of that Cap green Capricornus. On the subject of famous coral, here's our Jason Fox home wrecker colony, and here it is from above, so you can see some of those nice reds that it gets. It's usually a little more intense than this, but not looking too bad. And up here we have our bubblegum digitata colony. This is the one that's highest up in the tank, so it's the brightest looking one. Uh, I do really like these corals, so I put them in a couple places. To the right is a peach digitata, and a paleta pink tip right there at the top. Tank. Here we have a new frag that I'm excited about. This is the Voodoo Magic that I got at the recent Manhattan Reefs Frag Swap. There's a video link in the description for that. And this is the RMF Acid Trip. I am very excited about seeing both of these coral grow up. For those who don't know SBS Coral, the tenuous corals in this tank are the Home Wrecker, the Walt Disney, and this orange passion top and center here. It's one of the most beautiful tenuous, if not the most beautiful tenuous in my opinion. I love the orange and the purple and all the different colors in between. Up here we have a rainbow millipora, to the lower left of that a pink tip millipora, underneath both of them an ore confusa, and there's a space invader pectinia to the lower right there. Here's a frag I got recently in a trade with a local hobbyist. It is the TCK Dark Dragon, and here it is under the blue light. It's a little hard to pick out, but behind that red dragon coral, you'll see there's a tricolor of Elida. It's a small polyp stony coral classic in this hobby, and still one of the most beautiful corals you can get. This is also a better angle to see the Ori Confusa, which is also referred to as Spawn Goats. Here's a season's greetings encrusting Montipora that I planted on the right side overflow of the tank. And this is one of our Milka Stylo colonies. It originates from the Red Sea, and they're nice because they have the look of a bird's nest coral, but they don't die off the base when they're not getting enough light. Tucked in here, you can see some of that beautiful M. Setosa and that Sunset Montepore. They're both really good corals for filling in gaps because they won't usually won't grow over other types of SPS coral. And here's one of our larger milkless style of colonies in the corner of the tank. This is an Indo plate coral. I've had these in my tank for 10 years, and they've had dozens of babies over the years. And this encrusting species that I don't have the name of. So if anyone has an ID for this green encruster here, please leave a comment in the description. That bird's nest to the right will probably be getting rid of soon. I don't like the die-off issue with bird's nest. So and there's our grouper. He's curious, but also shy. He likes to just scoot away if he sees you looking at him. Here we have a sun-kissed 
bounce mushroom because you gotta have a sun kissed if you're gonna have NOG and then this beautiful orange chalice coral it's one of the last things again tucked away into crevices and spaces throughout the tank glows like crazy in the blue light unfortunately don't have a shot of that the whole entire tank again see how it all comes together still a lot of growing to do still a lot of cutting back that I need to make happen um, once you get to this phase and keeping a reef aquarium you're really in maintenance mode you're trying to make sure that corals don't grow into each other and kill each other and it's a really just kind of like basically gardening with coral instead of plants that's really what it feels like and whatever pieces you can move down to a frag system System. I like to have a frag system because I don't want to have racks all in my display tank. I'll do that. I'll try to grow them out down there. And there's a video about selling coral that I just did. It was the very last video I did on this channel. So I'll put a link to that in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video about the coral in our mixed reef aquarium. And then if you're setting up your own mixed reef or you already have a mixed reef aquarium, then it maybe gives you some ideas of what else you can put in there, what might go well together, color and shape, growth pattern wise um, this is all about us helping each other out in this community so please like subscribe we look forward to seeing you in the next video and we'll see you then